chairing of the Environment, Sustainability, and Parks meeting. I'm the president pro tempore of the council, as well as chair of this committee. This hearing is being recorded. It's being live streamed at boston.gov slash city dash council dash TV, as well as broadcast on Xfinity Channel 8, RCN Channel 82, and Fios Channel 964. Today, we'll be discussing docket 1013 regarding a $750,000 federal land and water conservation fund grant for the Malcolm X Park, formerly known as Washington Park in Roxbury. This funding will supplement the $6.65 million the city is investing in this large, popular, and historic park deep in the heart of Roxbury. This funding, which has been awarded by the National Park Service and administered by the Massachusetts Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, will target increasing the availability of recreational opportunities at this beloved park. Malcolm X Park is located one house lot away from the landmark home of Malcolm X's sister, where he briefly lived and frequently visited. Delighted to have uh, Aldo Guerin, who is the Senior Planner for Parks and Recreation, uh, as well as Lauren Bryant, uh, who will uh, be answering our Q&A. Uh, she is the project manager for this as well. We are also joined by City Councilor Ed Flynn uh, from District 2. And Councilor Flynn, I don't know if you had any opening statements or opening remarks before we get into it. Uh, thank you, Councilor Malley. I have no opening statements other than to say um, thank you to the dedicated team from Parks that are making significant improvements. Uh, it's a wonderful park, and people love the park. So I just want to say thank you. Well said. Here, here. Um, well, and if we we may have some more counselors join us. I will note that uh, Councillor uh, Braden uh, has submitted a letter, which I will briefly read. It's just two sentences long. Dear Chair O'Malley, I regret that I will not be able to be in attendance at today's Committee on Environment, Resiliency, and Parks hearing on Docket 1013 regarding a grant to be used for ADA accessibility improvements at Malcolm X Park. I look forward to reviewing the committee report. I ask that you please submit this letter into the committee record. It is hereby submitted. Thank you, Councilor Braden. And again, we may have more counselors join us, um, but we will get started. So. Although the floor is yours, if you had any presentation, please feel free to give it. And then I'm sure Councillor Flynn and I may have some questions. So thank you for uh, joining us. Great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and um, uh, Councillor uh, Flynn. I wanted to um, give a, a little brief presentation. Uh, let's see, do I have, yes, I have screen sharing. So let me get to the um, material here. So I have uh, six slides in this deck. Uh, this first slide here, uh, well, before I uh, launch into this, I just want to say that um, this grant is for $750,000 uh, for a project that uh, overall uh, will uh, cost over uh, $4.5 million. So, uh, you know, it Oh, you know, it's uh, not bearing the biggest share, but it certainly uh, is uh, contributes to uh, helping us, uh, you know, make this a more complete and full uh, renewal of the park. So, um, uh, wanted to uh, go over this existing conditions and uh, you know uh, that talk about not only the uh, what are deemed as uh, whatever deficiencies but also uh, the opportunities and as uh, Councillor Flynn mentioned it's a really great park it's you know it was called Washington Park uh, originally uh, I think pr pretty much most of the vegetated section you see in the upper kind of two-thirds that was more or less the original uh, Washington Park uh, the lower third where you see most of the you know the courts and the play area that was added um, in the 20th century uh, through uh, the urban renewal project, uh, you know, under uh, the BRA Aegis, as well as the uh, field that's in the upper left corner. Um, so uh, what we, you know, the, as I mentioned, this original park has beautiful views, not only uh, out to various parts of the city, uh, like downtown, uh, but also within the park, um, besides the vegetation itself, uh, the outcroppings of uh, Roxbury Pudding Stone are very attractive. Uh, and uh, as most Bostonians know, Roxbury Pudding Stone is uh, unique 
uh, to this area. In other words, nowhere else on earth will you find Roxbury Pudding Stone except the Boston uh, metropolitan area. Um, the uh, as I mentioned, the mature, you know, uh, tree canopy is uh, definitely an asset, particularly given um, heat island concerns with uh, climate change. And um, but uh, one thing that I uh, wanted to start to uh, mention is how, uh, thanks to the uh, ADA law, you know, all of our projects now have to meet uh, ADA requirements, and uh, pretty much except for one entrance, um, and that's near the um, children's play area. All the other entrances are not ADA accessible. Uh, the features in general, uh, the courts especially, are not ADA accessible, and a lot of the uh, paths are not accessible. So the paths that you see in orange, they're not accessible, uh, and um, the arrows that uh, you see at entrances that are uh, just outlines, those are also not accessible as well. So uh, there's a, a lot of uh, ADA um, issues with this park and it doesn't just affect people in wheelchairs, uh, you know, people, you know, mothers with strollers, uh, people with, um, uh, you know, the uh, all sorts of uh, people with uh, mobility disabilities uh, have issues. So, um, and yet at the same time, um, because it's an older park, uh, we want to keep as much as possible the fabric of it. And so, uh, you know, thanks to uh, creative uh, designers and uh, our uh, uh, project managers like Lauren, um, we're, we're able to figure out ways to maintain the original fabric and yet also create, um, uh, you know, accessible uh, ways of, uh, you know, accessing the features. Uh, let me give you some, um, hold on, pictures of what uh, conditions currently look like here. Um, you'll see, you know, uh, on the upper left there, those, uh, those are, you know, again, uh, not accessible because of the steepness, uh, which is, you know, in a sense, partly necessitated by the, the topography. Uh, we'll also see there are these concrete swales that um, are, are not very attractive, and they also, uh, you know, are um, features that uh, are no longer um, functioning well, uh, particularly when we want to try to um, retain uh, storm water within our parks rather than sending it to the storm sewer system. Uh, doing that, you know, uh, means more burdens uh, downstream uh, when we have flooding issues, you know, throughout the city, thanks to um, climate change. Uh, other, you know, features, uh, you see the railing here, that's, uh, you know, obviously in poor condition, uh, bollards that are not very attractive, obviously, uh, pavement that needs to be repaired. The uh, the walls, however, the stone walls, uh, you know, very attractive uh, feature. They're almost all of them are in very good shape, but uh, they're also oftentimes uh, accompanied by concrete um, walls that are, you know, not don't fit in with the uh, naturalistic character of the park. Uh, I have another set of photos here. Um, same thing. Um, maybe, uh, I don't know, Lauren, can you explain this what picture in the middle here that uh, where there's a, a barrel, trash barrel, and then this uh, at a grade above it, an opening, and uh, it just looks like a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, what, it, it, it is. Yeah, I'm happy to explain that one. Um, like Aldo said, the grading and the ADA accessibility um, of the existing park is really challenging here. Um, it may not seem like it, even though it looks really hilly, there's a 90 foot grade change over the entire park from high point to low point. So you run into a lot of issues like this area, which is looking um, from standing in the basketball court, looking up towards the roadway and that is a drop off a just there's no railing that goes across there's a drop off that goes down to the court and one of the things that we'll be doing is that each of the courts will be accessible not only from the park side but also the roadway side and the new design um, so Aldo that's what that is is the great okay. change coming from the road drop off into the basketball courts as the current condition right right 
And, um, you know, the lower photos show the uh, playground area. And uh, as you can see, a, a lot of concrete uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the use of um, wood chips uh, or wood fiber. Uh, you know, nowadays we, uh, I think on all our uh, new play, playgrounds, we put in uh, safety surfacing, the rubberized safety surfacing throughout the entire park. So we're going to be uh, improving this area, making it more naturalistic and also uh, fully, not only fully ADA accessible, but in, in fact, more uh, going beyond that to be inclusive as well. Um, this is the, by current plan, meaning the plan that we are hoping to, you know, that we will be constructing. Uh, you can see the yellow dotted lines are all ADA accessible pathways. Some of them will not, some of the pathways it will be, you know, existing pathways that aren't ADA accessible. Uh, uh, but otherwise, every major feature, the uh, courts uh, will be accessible, uh, not only from the street, there are these, you know, short little paths that come from the uh, sidewalk on Martin Luther King Boulevard to the courts, they'll be um, accessible from there as well as within the park. Uh, the uh, children's play area will be accessible as well. And, um, you know, we're going to be uh, installing a new amphitheater near the school building nearby uh, that'll be usable for uh, class outdoor classrooms as well as uh, for uh, any kind of um, special event in the park. Um, Aldo, if I could just jump in really quickly on oh, those sure. few paths that are not ADA accessible, I just want to note that um, based on ADA regulations, there's a percentage of pathways and entrances that are required within a facility to be ADA accessible. And even with those few that we weren't able to make ADA accessible, we are far um, far exceeding the percentages that are required. And the only oh. way that those ones could be made um, ADA accessible would be to um, remove that historic pudding stone and the historic um, walls that are surrounding them. Um, but I just wanted to make sure to point out that even with those few that we weren't able to, we are far exceeding the requirements of ADA. Great, great. Uh... And uh, just one more thing, uh, I, uh, there are these uh, gathering areas you'll see just above the uh, one of the tennis courts um, where there are going to be picnic areas, et cetera. These gathering areas, uh, you know, are new um, and uh, they'll be, you know, much more functional than what was there before, which was uh, a kind of, uh, uh, what's the word you used, uh, Lauren? Um, it's almost like a quad, but it was just right. pathways that went down a really steep slope. So it was steep enough that you couldn't even really put a functional bench in that space. Right. I think, yeah, the, it had that uh, X uh, configuration, very much like uh, Brophy Park in East Boston. Uh, uh, and, and my recollection of Brophy Park is that it's also on a steep slope to uh, here. Uh, we're making this now a bit more functional and more accessible as well. Um, let's see, next. Uh, Next slide. So this is uh, this slide, and the next slide will be show the uh, the new plans accessibility. You can see the red lines mean that it's not uh, paths are not accessible. So if you're trying to get to the basketball courts, you can't get there via um, you know the, uh, the sidewalk. Uh, you know, and uh, really you can't get there from here. Even the little bit of blue you see here uh, is you can't get there by a, an accessible path to that area. Same thing with the Kenneth courts. The only um, recreational feature you can access is the, uh, you know, playground itself. Um, otherwise, uh, all these entrances are not accessible and, and basically the, the park is, uh, you know, limited uh, accessibility as a result. Now, the, uh, in the proposed accessibility, uh, the we've basically gone from a, a majority of paths inaccessible to now a majority of paths that are accessible, uh, while at the same time retaining a lot of the uh, 
historic fabric, as, as Lauren was mentioning. Uh, the basketball courts are now accessible. The tennis courts are uh, the playground uh, gathering areas and the, uh, our new gathering areas um, on either end of the uh, athletic field area. Those are going to be accessible as well. The entrances are accessible. And Lauren, as I understand that that, that uh, entrance in the middle between the two endpoints on Dale Street, that's also going to be accessible too, correct? It's, uh, it's a set of stairs, but the stairs and the handrails will meet ADA compliance for stairways. Oh, okay. um, the other two um, that are along the Higginson Lewis School um, aren't marked as being accessible um, into the park and the amphitheater, and those will also be accessible um, coming into the, uh, from the school into the park. Okay, great, great. Um, now I'm going to switch to a different, can, is, let's see, okay, so let me, I think I have to ask for a different screen. Okay, great. So this is uh, basically uh, some text uh, uh, going over a certain amount of what I've already described, uh, how the majority of the paths now will be ADA accessible, entrances will be accessible. Uh, the children's play lot will be inclusive. And uh, well, one thing that, you know, is really uh, amazing to me is that because of the topography, uh, you know, they're able to make for wheelchair access, not only on the lower levels of the prey structure, but also the upper levels as well. So that's that's pretty impressive. So now uh, a child in a wheelchair can, you know, be higher up in those higher up levels of the play area as well, which I know, you know, kids usually enjoy being at that, that level as well. Um, again, basketball and tennis will be, uh, have, you know, accessible entrances. Um, Concrete squales will be removed. The uh, storm water will be handled in, in two ways. One, uh, under the uh, you know the big sports field, there's going to be an infiltration system, and it's going to be sourced both by the field and the park uphill of the field. For the park, part of the park downhill of the field, vegetated squales will connect to manholes and catch basins that will infiltrate into the soil in in the park itself. Uh, regarding the uh, trees here, the, uh, we're going to have a net gain of 41 trees, 85 are going to be added, 44, however, are going to be removed. All have been approved by the city's tree warden. They're, they're either invasive species or they're dead and dying and, and pose you know, hazards because of the, the dead wood. One healthy tree is being removed for one of the ADA accessible paths. And so uh, overall, there'll be a net positive in terms of uh, adding trees and existing trees will be pruned for tree health and longevity. And that's not an afterthought to keep, you know, these existing trees, some of them, you know, pretty, pretty good uh, sized trees, uh, keeping that canopy as healthy as possible, will, you know, is, uh, you know, a, a strategy for uh, cooling and um, carbon sequestration as well. Landscape wise, as I mentioned, all the existing stone walls will remain. Uh, most of the existing paths uh, are going to remain as well, but some are going to be realigned for ADA accessibility. Um, putting stone outcroppings will remain with interpretive signage, uh, and invasive vegetation is going to be cleared out for safety sake and landscape improvement. So basically, it's going to be a more uh, what's called a park-like landscape where you see um, you know, the tree canopy and you see lawn, but uh, the what's called the understory layer is not going to be available because of safety concerns, um, public safety primarily. Uh, for shade and heat mitigation, uh, the, we have various measures. The field is going to have a shaded dugout. Um, the main basketball court will have a shaded bench. Picnic tables will be shaded. Uh, we're going to add five more drinking fountains. Uh, these, I think, are the... Um, uh, the water uh, bottle fillers. Um, right. That's right. And then uh, water play, uh, you know, is going to have safety surfacing as well and uh, provide a, you know, a, a critical cooling element. So um, that's, that's about all I have at this point. Um, is there, you know, we can open up to Q&A. 
Well, thank you very much, uh, Aldo. That was a very uh, thorough uh, uh, overview and a very exciting overview at that. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling wistful. I remember when I did the hearing order for uh, installing water filling stations in our parks and playgrounds, it seemed as it was such a new idea. And now it's obviously part of all the specs and it's great to see five of them included uh, here. Um, and and Lauren, Lauren, similarly, thank you for your leadership. I mean, this is this is absolutely exciting. This is a home run all around. Um, I know that park well. My my mother and, and sister both taught at the Higginson Lewis School. I know it was well used by the students. So, and and I know that there have been and, and I'm sure are now students who use wheelchairs who attend that school. So to be able to make a more inclusive space for kids to play is uh, kids of all ages is just tremendous. So, um, you know, I'm so glad you're keeping the stone walls. I think they're so important and beautiful, but I'm also glad that you're adding more of that porous rubber surface that you're making it obviously more accessible that you're planting new trees. This is clearly um, something that we're all really, really excited about. So I, I don't have any questions. My statement is I'm so excited to put this before the entire council, as I will do on Wednesday. Um, God willing, the only reason I wouldn't is if there's some, um, you know, technical change. But um, I will intend on pulling this for a vote on Wednesday, and then it should act, act, the money should be accessed thereafter. Although, if you could get uh, Michelle Goldberg a copy of those bullet points specifically, okay, um, that'd be really, really helpful. Just as we sort of draft our committee report, but um, I'm just very excited. What's uh, I guess my only question is, you know, provided we vote on this, and I anticipate it will be unanimous on Wednesday. Um, what phase are we in the uh, renovation? I know it's about a six and a half million dollar renovation. What's when, when's when's the big ribbon cutting going to be? Where I, as a private citizen, can come and uh, bring my daughter to hopefully play on this playground. Do we have any idea what the, when this will all be completed? Uh, Although, I, do you I, want me to jump in on that one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the design is 100% complete. We bid the project in August and are currently um, working on the bid review. We're hoping that we will be able to award the contract um, within the coming month or so. Um, the plan is to start construction in the spring, um, and then it would be approximately a year's worth of construction, um, just because it is quite a substantial project. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to double check on a couple of quick things just to throw out there for um, the budget is actually a $7.7 .7 million wow. estimate for the park. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to clarify um, from the bullet points, Aldo, is the rubber surfacing is going to be on the playground, but the um, water play is actually um, on a hard surface, which is our standard uh. for parks. So the rubber, the water play is not on rubber surfacing. Sometimes that can get a little bit slick. Um, oh, so okay. The only clarification I wanted to make, but the playground will have the rubber surfacing. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, actually, now that you just wanted to clarify. <laughs> okay. um, and so we think, you know, barring any any sort of unforeseen delays, which may happen, we'd be looking at the summer of 2023, where there will be a lovely ribbon cutting and we'll all be able to access this. And um, your keep, you had mentioned, I think this is an Olmstead designed park and you're going to, for the most part, keep the pathways as they are, recognizing there may be some changes for ADA compliance, which in my opinion, as a historian, is more important to have ADA compliance than, um, you know, than keeping them perfectly historically accurate. So it sounds like you're doing the best to both satisfy both of those goals, which is important. Um, I'm excited. I think this is great, great work all around, and this is going to be a wonderful addition to our city. So that's all I have. Uh, Councillor Flynn, any questions, thoughts, concerns? Thank you, Councillor O'Malley. Just to say uh, thank you to Aldo and to, and to Lauren for your presentations. And as the vice chair of the Civil Rights Committee, I spend most of my time on that committee working on um, how we can improve city services for persons with disabilities. And what you're doing here is exactly that. You're giving young children the opportunity to also play and have some fun in the playground and enjoy it. And, be with their friends and be with their family. So, you know, just as a city resident, you know, it makes me so proud to see parks like this, uh, parks across the city, um, making improvements for um, for our children with, um, with disabilities. So I just want to say thank you, not just from me, but really from the residents of Boston who really, um, really know the importance of making sure that our parks are accessible to young kids, persons with disabilities. So 
Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Aldo. Thank you, Councillor Flynn. Mm -hmm. Well said. Um, I don't see any other councillors. Uh, I don't believe we have any individuals signed up for. Oh, there are two attend. Oh no, that's uh, and Chantel. Would um, Michelle? Is there any members of the or are there any members of the public who had signed up to testify? Signups. No signups, I believe. Great. Okay. Well, um, I don't know, Lauren. Aldo, are there any concluding remarks before I gavel this hearing out? No, no, I'm just I'm really excited about the project too. And and Councillor Finn, thank you for the comments about the ADA compliance with everything because we are trying to go above and beyond that. And I know we've met with um, Commissioner Makash um, from the Disability Commission, and she's really excited about it as well. So that's great. Well, this is, you know, I wish we had more hearings like this because this is just uh, wonderful news <laughs> all around. Keep up the great work, Lauren. and keep up the great work, Aldo. We will, uh, you know, on behalf of Councillor Flynn and myself, we're going to pull, uh, urge all colleagues to vote in support of Docket 1013 on Wednesday. Um, I would suggest you will have a very favorable vote on Wednesday and just keep up the great work. We look forward to being at the ribbon cutting in a couple of years. So, uh, seeing no more uh, opportunities for testimony, docket 1013 uh, and the Committee on the Environment, Sustainability and Parks uh, is hereby adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.